this is Lee from Piney Oak Painted Desert Sheep and Piney Oak Homestead. We are here today with Monica Spalding, the registrar for the Painted Desert, Desert Sheep Society. And we're going to interview her today and hopefully she can teach us some things so that uh, the new people and maybe some of the people who already have experience will learn something new. So how are you doing today? Hi, thanks for coming out, Lee. I sure, sure. appreciate you guys coming out and uh, helping guide some of our new and old breeders and give them some maybe some ideas of the different processes and the different ranches and the, the different things that we do and uh, to make things easier. And so Monica, could you tell us a little bit how you got involved with Painted Desert Sheep and your history with them? And Absolutely, Lee. Um, I actually had goats. <laughs> I started with, um, uh, I had some Nigerians and I had some Spanish goats and uh, a friend of mine had said she had two little colored sheep and I thought oh well those will be pretty and with my goats will be something a little bit different and from my goats that I had and so I started with two sheep just to be ornaments and within a few months I had sold all my goats and bought a whole flock of sheep and I wasn't running a guardian dog at the time and we had just the regular fencing and we would bring them up close to the barn at night and um, it was in October and I had been raising sheep for a couple years and I had spent we had a big old flock and we were about three weeks out of um, for away from lambing and I had 22 sheep and a ram. I went all the way back to Mesquite, went back to the original foundation lines with Anita and uh, it happened early in the morning and my husband and came, my son came up to feed and found about 18 of my 22 sheep just mutilated. It was we had several that were we had two we had a couple that had been attacked by the uh, had been attacked and, and eaten and the rest had pretty much died from the stress of being ran around. Um, a friend of ours is a tracker and he came over and said that it was probably a bachelor band and we saw it on our neighbor's camera, his game camera. There's about four or five young coyotes that had gotten into our pen in the middle of the night even though we had the barbed wire around the back of it and we had the four foot high no climb fence and everything else but they had gotten through the gate and mm -hmm. so when they had bent the gate back to get through and that was the only place where it wasn't fortified with the barbed wire and they um, ended up taking out 18 of my 22 sheep. Wow. So about three thousand dollars later in vet bills and putting them down and we had broken legs and we had all kinds of stuff just from them just dying of mainly shock um, infections from the bite wounds we were left with about four babies and Anita who I didn't know very much um, other than just calling and saying hey um, she was always Anita is always great about picking up the phone and answering questions and she's been like that from the day date I've met her when I decided to become part of the registry um, she's always been open and available and so I of course called her and asked for her advice and the vet and I treated, we were trying to treat and save what we could and um, I had purchased a ram from her prior to the attack and he of course uh, had gotten bitten, had spinal damage and um, he was a tombstone son and Anita and uh, Adam and uh, Junior Pena and uh, Adam Kratz and Kathy Bentley and Chelsea who's no longer doing it, they all, Anita started it Anita volunteered a ram. She gave me one of her rams out of tombstone to replace it because I was going to be done with sheep because I just couldn't, we couldn't recover from the cost of the vet bills and the loss of the flock and just the devastation. But Anita coordinated with a couple other breeders um, to help resupply me to get me back with good stock again and get me back into the, to the painted deserts because we couldn't afford it. And that's when we brought in the livestock dogs. And that's why I'm a big proponent of livestock dogs or livestock animals. Uh, you know, being or animals being protected by dogs or llamas. I know some people have had success with it. I had a donkey at the time of the attack, and the donkey didn't do anything to mm -hmm. stop them. So I'm not a big, big happy. But long story short, um, Anita and the Anita and Adam and um, Kathy and all of them just really went out of their way to kind of help. Um, Kathy gave me, you know, let me uh, purchase at a reduced price and she held back some really nice sheep for me and so I could get back into it and Adam of course gave me free, Junior gave me free, um, a lot of the breeders stepped up and just gave me good free use and Anita gave me the ram and that helped me get started back over and that was well over a decade ago and then um, uh, so that's how I actually got into Painted Deserts and I had two different cycles of it with the Painted Deserts. I had my first flock and then I had the second flock and then I found out that the Painted Desert Sheep Society 
and Anita and all those members and all those breeders cared more about helping me survive that traumatic experience and help me gain from it and learn from it and not be so where I was out of the breed that they all kind of chipped together and helped me get started. So that family atmosphere yes, is what solidified it for me. That's what I was going to say. It's not really the Painted Desert Sheep Society. It's the Painted Desert Sheep family. Mm -hmm. I've come to realize that too. Yeah. And it's really special. We've had it with uh, another breeder lost a big, he's lost all his flock to the floods in last mm -hmm. May, um, Heathwood. He lost and uh, about a dozen breeders all came together and helped him get restarted because he was down from 30 sheep down to two. And it's, it's uh, something that as a, a group, we really care about each other. Yes. And it's, you know, we want you to succeed. We want you to love the breed as much we, as we do. We all kind of really work to create an atmosphere to learn, an atmosphere to succeed in. Um, mentorship is readily available. Um, like you doing this channel for for new people and from others and filling out information out there. Um, but anyways, a couple of years ago, um, Anita had wanted to retire and she had asked me for a few years if, if I'd be interested in taking over the registrar position. And there's no way you could fill those shoes. <laughs> No way. Um, but she said she would hold my hand and we created the advisory board, which consists of myself and six other members and um, to really grow. And we went from 62 members to 250 members in the last two years. We went from um, roughly about 4,800 sheep to right now I'm just issuing 7,200 in the registration numbers. Um, and uh, it's it's really grown and it's just and it's and it's still keeping that family core together that she had originally started i mean that was anita she would she would call you in the middle of the night if you had an emergency i mean it's just her and arturo were great um uh, and that is what that's why i became the registrar is because she asked and she said she told my hand and we'd have the advisory board and i just love the family and i love the breed and i want to make sure that people are as successful as 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 they can be with it and that they have a they have a support system thank you for that i i really appreciate that and like i said i i've learned over the past three years that it's a really close knit group and all the older more advanced uh experienced people that they're so helpful and you can ask them anything and they don't make you feel like oh, what kind of question is that i mean they're there to help you no matter what uh, could you tell us a little bit more on the history of the Painted Desert Sheep and how they got started? And absolutely, absolutely. So it started on the Wyo Ranch. They were actually, and they actually still uh, have exotics on the ranch. Um, it's a family that's been part. Of, I think it's a Schneider family. It's uh, um, it was started by a sea captain who, who purchased the ranch, um, and then it's been in the it's been in the Schneider family for six generations. Uh, and, and still going, and it's still actually an exotic ranch. So the Painted Deserts, what happened is um, they had put some European mouflons with some other horned hair breeds like your um, Jacobs and um, some of your Rambouillet and, oh, uh, they actually have the Barbados sheep that are pulled, but they put them all um, on this hunting ranch that they were using way back in the early 1900s. Um, and they, bred and crossed and whatever they did out in, in their natural habitat, which created these a different horned varieties. We, can, we got Texas dolls for them. It actually became Corsicans and then they mm -hmm. brought in some other ones. It's about a, comp a, com a composite breed of about six different breeds. But the breed actually started with the Corsican brothers and they kind of divulged out on this and then it Spire, then it kind of came down into where it was the Painted Deserts, the Texas Dolls, then we had the American Black Bellies, <clears throat> um, your Desert Sands, your Stumbergs, all these kind of different breeds originated from those original, that original um, pairings of it. Uh, how the Painted Deserts were actually called, they used to be called Party Dolls. Mm -hmm. And so they, uh, Anita was really enthralled. There was Anita and Judy and a few others that were really back when it had been started and they were buying sheep at auctions that looked like painted deserts. And then they would come and they'd cross them and they'd breed. And then if it was the horned, and I mean, this was of course several decades ago, um, 
they, you know, they would take those horns and they take those genetics and they breed them with a mouflon or they breed them with, you know, a rambouillet or a, a Jacob sheep and they would, tr they were trying to isolate those genes to make a shedable hair sheep. And so it really kind of started on an exotic ranch. It started out in the wild. Somebody saw it and said, that's a really cool looking sheep. And they became where they were easy shedders, parasite resistance, good mothers. They had multiple births every year. They, I mean, the, just the positive started stacking up on them. And the Painted Desert name actually came from an exotic, exotic auction that um, is over in Harper, Texas. It's an auction that's been around since like, I think 1981. Um, and uh, the guy called them Painted Deserts. They were used to be called party owls and the, the, the auctioneer called them Painted Deserts and, the na and Anita took that name and Stop. she coined it. And they have become Painted Deserts and since 1997 is when the, the registration started, when reg the, Anita started the registra uh, registry for the Painted Deserts and started uh, creating a stu master stud book and tracking them all. And here we are, you know, well over 25 later, years later, 28 years, 20, almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. It'll be in a few, a little, a couple more years, it'll be 30. So my math's not very good today. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in and hopefully we'll have some more videos like this to help educate people on the Painted Desert Sheep and we look forward to seeing you again.